Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartista Lab, and in this video, we're going to boil back down to basics, and we're going to look at a signature technique. We're going to be looking at palm strikes. A lot of the time in the combatives industry, we take our palm strikes for granted, and we assume people know things that maybe they don't know. So I just wanted to take it nice and simply back to the use of the hand, and particularly in the palm, how can we make it effective? So, main thing is, know what we want to do. The same with every single technique in combatives. Everything we do in martial arts or for self-defense, there's going to be a reason why we do it. And when it comes to using the palm, it's a very versatile tool. So we've got to understand, do we want to be using our palm to knock someone out? So therefore, what's the most conducive way to shake this man's brain, to knock him out? And what types of blows with the palm are best for that? Do I want to knock you down? Because that might be a slightly different methodology. Think of it the difference between a solid tiger claw shot, bang, which might be more concussive. Then you think about something like a chin jab, which may be more aligned to the knock down as well as the knock out. We may wish to turn the head. So we're in a fucked up grapple here. I might throw the palm to turn your head, boom. So I open up the longer part of your jaw, bang. So again, I might be using my palm to turn your head. Again, that's a slightly different usage. I may be using the palm as a way to end up with incidental finger damage or injury to the eye. Or I may be using the palm as a way to get damage to the throat. So again, it could be to knock out, knock down, to move the opponent, or to unlock some ancillary damage with something else. So again, there are many reasons why we might wish to use it, but you've got to understand there's no point just mashing people in the face with no targeting and no reason. One of the major problems with a palm is that people think this is a big gross motor weapon, because palms are generally quite big. My main problem with that is people end up being laissez-faire with their accuracy. When it comes to using the palm, in reality, the weapon is no bigger than a 50 pence piece because the useful bit is the base, the center base of the palm, in line with the forearm. So I've got structure here against it. Too many people use this as a gross motor weapon and end up hitting with the central part of their hand, which is useless. It's useless. All of the bones here, they're all spread out, obviously, and so there are many gaps. There's not a hard object. The base of the palm is what you want to hit with, so it's a tool that requires some degree of accuracy. There's no point just mashing willy-nilly. You need to be thinking, bang, am I hitting with the right damaging part of the palm on the right bit of the face to do what I want to do? Re my earlier point, do I want to turn your head? Do I want to knock you out? Do I want to knock you down? Do I want to grab something nasty? All of these have different usages. But in the main, make sure that you're still being accurate using the right part of your palm for the job. That really is important. So let's look at why we might use a hand. So why we might use a palm? A couple of reasons. Reason number one, not everybody is comfortable or able or confident in bare knuckle punching. And that's absolutely cool. What I don't subscribe to is there's a big modern anti-punching trend out there in self-defense and combatives. So suddenly, for some reason, people believe that everybody has sugar fists that explode into dust at the merest contact. The truth of the matter is most fights use punches. 99% of fights, people are punching fuck out of each other. And yes, they may get some injury or damage to their hand, but people can still get the job done relatively handily with their fists, which is more natural and more normal for the vast majority of people. And whilst you know everyone brings up, oh, well, Mike Tyson against Mitch Green, he really hurt his hand. Well, yes, he hurt his hand, but he still won the fight, didn't he? That's all you need to care about. But I would say that if you don't feel confident in hitting bare knuckle, if that is something that scares you or worries you, or you don't quite trust it, absolutely learn the palm. In reality, we don't need to be so partisan. Learn to use both. There are benefits to both in lots of different circumstances. You don't need to be in camp A or camp B. 
But I would say that if you're not that confident in punching, don't punch. You know, it's one of those things that it's a skilled pick. If you want to do it very, very well, you know, if you want to get it on target, I'm not so worried about your hand breaking, I'm worried about your hand being useful. So you need to get used to being able to deliver knuckles on target in a way that makes sense. And if you're not feeling that confident with it, it's probably a tool you want to work on more before you rely on it. A lot of people, they only punch soft things, such as a bag, you know, like a barb over here, like mitts, with a soft thing on their hands. So they've got a pillow on a pillow. Yeah, well, that's fine, and that you really build up and throw bombs and get attributes. But in reality, you also want to wean yourself off that if you want to get used to bare knuckle hitting. Get used to hitting a soft thing with no padding on, or potentially just a light wrap, you know, if you want to make sure you've got complete safety and surety. Eventually, you might want to move on to hitting slightly harder things without those wraps on. Again, you know, hitting bare knuckle is a, is a video for another time, but for most people, if you're not confident with it, don't do it, and that's where palms are really useful. If it's your job to have very good fine motor skills, so if you are police, military, bats, if you need your fingers to operate radios, to operate machinery, operate equipment, absolutely, it does make a lot of sense to go with open-handed blows, because any damage you might occur will be a lot more telling if your job requires the dexterity of your fingers. But all said and done, I'm still a believer in punching as much as I'm a believer in palm strikes. But if you're less than confident with it, you may wish to use it then. Another great benefit is having an open palm when you hit is really conducive to be able to grip. When you have an open hand, when you hit, it's very easy to grip. Grip a lump of face, ear, hair, clothing, whatever, belt, whatever you've got. When you've got an open hand, when you hit, you can grip really, really well. And that has a lot of benefits if you're looking at holistic fighting, because hitting turns to gripping, turns to wrestling very, very quickly. So the ability to hit, grip, move, do something else is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic tool. So I'm just going to go through some of the ways in which you may wish to use your palm. So what I would say is it's important to look at the delivery mechanism. You know, this is the drill bit, I am the drill. This is the bullet, I am the gun. The body is the deliverer of the tool. So you still need to be able to throw a fit for purpose right cross. For you to be able to throw a fit for purpose right palm. Mechanically, it's the same shit. Your hip's still turning, your foot's still turning, your shoulder's still turning. You're still exploding your body weight into it. You know, there is no secret source, there is no shortcut. You need to put in the hours of being able to land a solid right hand for you to have any hope of being able to do it with your palm. So the boxing delivery mechanic is really good for open-handed stuff. I would encourage everybody to do boxing, to do rounds, go to gyms, learn that craft, because it's a brilliant delivery tool for palm-led striking. So if you break down some of the more commonly occurring ones and how they align to boxing striking. So let's take a longer range tiger claw, a straight palm heel. Yep, we're following the same boxing mechanic of turning the hip, the shoulder, the foot, bang! We're aiming with that small center part of the palm, boom! And again, that can be in and out, or it can hit and stick and grip. So you can go, whoop, or you can go, whoop. Either way, you want to be hitting with that hard bit of the palm, you want to be delivering it with the same force mechanics as a cross, so you don't need to learn two different mechanics. When we get a little bit closer, we might move into palm hook territory. There's a number of ways to do this. The one thumb up method, again, from here, is essentially a solid slap, but as opposed to a slap, again, think discipline. Don't want to slap with this, I want to hit you with that hard bit of the palm. So again, I'm still using the mechanics of a hook. I'm still turning the hip, turning the shoulder, having discipline, much like I would with a knuckle discipline. We're using this discipline here. So we're still hitting with all of the body mechanics of a right or left hook. So again, nice and simple. Bang! Bang! And again, I'm likely wanted to use this 
to cause concussive, concussion or to be concussive, to knock him out, to shake his brain. Same with the palm hooks, bang, bang. Odds are I'm looking to shake his brain. I can also do a thumb down variant. This is when you're at hyper close range and I smash it in this way, but still it's like a tight hook. I'm still moving the body. The delivery mechanism is still like a hook. From here, smashing right into the jawbone. Again, accuracy using the hard lower central part of the palm is really very important. Okay, what I may wish to do, and again that would be concussive, one which I may do to be concussive and or get a knock down, to knock the opponent down, which may be my aim, I may have a chin jab methodology. I've got other videos that go into this in more detail, but in essence, the inner part of my forearm, nice and close into the chest, the hard lower bit of my palm, is cracking him underneath the jaw, but it's the same body mechanic as an uppercut. The hip is still surging up, boom, boom. I'm still firing it in that boom, uppercut way. I'm not overloading it. I'm not throwing it like a bolo uppercut, boom. Wham. The hip surges with it. Wham. And in this instance, whether it's unattached, that means I don't grab him, bang. Or whether I do grab him, bang. In reality, much of this is aligned to knock the opponent down because of the action it goes up and over, tipping the head beyond the arse, which typically results in a knockdown, if not a knockout. So I may wish to use the chin jab or a chin jab style technique with the hard bit of the palm to knock a man down here, here, or here, or here it may be to knock a man out. So again, you've got those different options. You may wish if your chin jab's not been successful or hasn't been as percussive as you wanted it to be, you may use that as the opportunity to get ancillary damage to grip or to grip and rip, to grip and rip. And that could be anywhere. It could be from the side hook, grip, rip. You know, being able to have the use of the fingers to cause ancillary damage that may be what you wanted to use the palm for in the first place. That may be your mechanism to do that. But again, it all comes off boxing style delivery platforms, like uppercut motions, like hooking motions, like cross or jab motions. You've got, you've got to be able to nail that body mechanic. Very, very important for landing these shots. Don't think because it's a gross motor weapon, you can just be lazy in how it fires out. You do need discipline in what hits where and what do you want to do with it. So again, you know, I've got knockout, knockout. I might have knockout or knockdown, boom. I may have strike to grip or rip. And that can be from any of these techniques. I could throw a tiger claw, boom. Grip a lump of face, rip that fucker out. Again, causing nasty damage to the face. Again, it's up to you and the level of threat and the level of force and what is reasonable and what you want to achieve. All of those factor in. But again, using the palm with concerted plans, you know what you want that palm to do. Then you've got even longer range ones where again, I might want to achieve the knockdown. So I might do a palm smash like you might see Kelly McCann and others do. Where it's a bit like throwing a ball over the top. This comes down. Again, I'm still using the hard bit of the palm cracking it down the face, then the fingers may wipe. So again, the initial ballistic part, that might be to knock him down, because it brings the head down. It's a really good buckling shot. Or it may be I use that as the mechanism to get something to rake the eye. And again, I'm consciously using the hard bit of the palm to crunch down on his nose or on the central part of his face. I'm still using the disciplined part of the palm. So whether you want knockdowns, knockouts, maxiofacial damage, gripping and ripping damage, whatever you want to do, there's a decent palm strike for that. Let alone the ones that travail. So it may be from this grapple, I don't wish to injure you per se, I want to move you. So again, I can use the palm to push to drive out. 
I may do that in this instance to open up a bit more jaw. Bang! For another shot. So again, it needn't always be extremely percussive. I might use my palm strike to leverage another part of your body to turn your head, turn your body, so I can fire something else. That may be a legitimate purpose. Or I may wish to shoulder stop you. Jack Johnson, the boxer, amazing for this, he'll shoulder stop you. So imagine that's your, uh, that's the punching hand, that might be a hand with a weapon in it, whatever. I may wish to fire this open-handed shot at the shoulder to jolt it back before it hit you up top. Again, so it may not be an immediately combative strike, but I'm stopping a blow from hitting me, and then I'm being combative. Again, just know what you want your palm heels to do, but making sure you're using the right weapon of that palm, either the hard central bit here, or using that to enable you to grip and rip. These are really important tools. And obviously make sure that you train to do that. So for example, I'm gonna go with solo training equipment because that's what the world's like at the moment. Again, when I'm working things like focus mitts, let's say I'm doing a chin jab, I can practice the boxing delivery mechanic and the grip and the rip. I can practice the ballistic hook-like motion of the palm hook. Again, focusing on accuracy. Longer range for the tiger claw, I can do it ballistically or ballistically to grip. Or All of these options are available to you. You may also in that same uppercut motion that we were doing the chin jab, you may wish to do that for a face smash underneath. So let's imagine we're in a position when we're in the tussle here. It may be that I want to smash up into his face this way. So I'm still using discipline. Still using the hard bit of my palm. And then grip, then do something. Yeah, you've got all these options available to you, but when you're practicing on your pad, be deliberate in your thinking. Don't just think big weapon, big target. Think small weapon, small target. It's very forgiving that if you fuck up, it will still work, but that's no excuse to be lazy. Target the right bit to the right bit. Along the front of the jaw, I might want the side of the jaw to turn him. I might want down the front of his nose or to his face to get him crying, to get him in pain, to buckle his head. You know, really think about the consequences of what you're doing with your palm so you're treating it more like a grown-up weapon. And then you can start to play with things like these. These are slam bags. It's a leather bag filled with lead shot. And again, I can work on conditioning, smacking, hitting, but I can also be ballistic so I can practice hitting and gripping. I can, I can work the same boxing mechanics with this. I can work on my reaction time, my reaction speed, I can work on the conditioning of my palm, I can work on my finger strength because I have to grip this relatively clumsy and difficult object with speed, with power, with ferocity. So again, focus on accuracy, know the variety of palm strikes. I see a lot of self-defense martial arts, but like, oh, palm strike. It's not as simple as that. There are so many variations. Use the right tool for the right job. Yes, can I turn a screw using a bottle opener? Yes, I can, but I'd rather do it with a screwdriver. So if my job is to turn your head, or to knock you down, or to knock you out, there are ways of using my palm which are most conducive to do that. So again, it's always worth going back to basics, start at the beginning, take things that you assume to be a given, and reevaluate, reassess, retest with your equipment at home, with your partners when the world opens. Using your palm is a fantastic tool, but don't get lazy. You know, just because it's simple doesn't give you a pass for it to be lazy. Work on your boxing delivery mechanics. Work your hips, work your shoulders, work your feet. Get used to doing this at different heights and ranges. You're not going to get attacked by midgets. Attack people that are likely to be bigger than you. If you've hit them in the bollocks, their head might come down. They might be there smaller than you. you know, mix up all of the variables, but never be afraid to go back to the basics. Which bit of my hand am I hitting with? What type of strikes are available to me? And what effect will they typically cause? So hopefully that's been a bit interesting. You go back to basics on the palm strike, give it a play. There are so many people doing brilliant work with palm strikes all around the world. It's just a bit of a taster.
give it a whirl. Embarrassingly, the screensaver is still on, so treat that as bonus content. Train safe.